Welcome to Visibility Unlimited. I'm Leslie Short, your host and owner of the Cavo Group. We work with companies and organizations to expand beyond their current culture. Visibility Unlimited discusses topics focusing on diversity, inclusion, leadership, culture, and current events. Look out for my book, Expand Beyond Your Current Culture, out January 2021. Enjoy this episode and remember to subscribe to stay updated on future podcasts. We made it through 2020, almost. I hope you enjoy this recap as we have overcome in 2020 and we are looking forward to 2021. What are you expecting? What do you want? And what will you do? Tune in. Well, December 16th, 2020, we've made it through 2020, almost. (laughs) So again, thank you everyone for joining us here at Webinar 26. Um, We're going to have a discussion today on what has shaped 2020, how do we finish out 2020 and move on to 21. Um, and what we wanted to do is kind of recap some of the discussions that we've had this year um, during this pandemic um, from when we started back in, I think it was March is when we had the first, uh, the first webinar. And now that webinar has morphed into, um, has morphed into our podcast, uh, Leslie's podcast. Um, our podcast. Yes, yes. <laughs> And so, uh, so yeah, just um, just wanna just wanna recap on some of the discussions we've had, such as the pandemic, the Black Lives Matter movement, women in power, and the power shift of women. You know, just speaking about politics, remote working, healthcare, social justice, racial justice. You know, whitewashing, alley fatigue, um, social media challenges, blackish mixes, mixish cultural appropriation versus cultural appreciation. You know, and how does all this, you know, how do we, how do we make those changes um, going into 2021 and what changes are you expecting, you know, and what changes do you want and what changes you'll make? So again, I will say this um, for the last time in 2020, thank you for joining us here at webinar 26. Um, And again, my name is Micah and I head up a group called the Village Collective and we've enjoyed um, spending, you know, the, the greater part of nine months doing these uh, doing these uh, these webinars and podcasts with Leslie Short of the Cavo Group. And so with uh, no further ado, I'll go ahead and turn it over to Leslie. Hi, everyone. Um, as Mike said, thanks for joining. Um, excited, not because it's the last one, just excited because, um, whoa, 2021 is around the corner, whatever that means. Um, this is an interactive discussion, so jump in. Um, I'm the owner of the Cavo Group. I work with companies and organizations to expand beyond their current culture, and I do that through the diversity and inclusion lens. We started these podcasts back in March because I was getting phone calls and people are going, what do I do? How do I adjust? adjust? How do I work from home? My boss is a jerk. Uh, <laughs> it was just all this, and I was like, I can't be on the phone all day with everyone. I love them. And I called Michael, we had just finished um, doing an event together and was speaking about what else we could do. And I was like, what is, what's your thoughts? Maybe we should do a series of three. And now we're at 26 and here we are in 2020 has taken us for a twirl. So I'm going to start out with just saying, I'm not sure how you thought your 2020 (laughs) was going to roll out. But I'll just tell you how I thought mine was going to roll out. The beginning of the year, the end of last year, I signed the book deal. So I knew I had to write this book and get it done this year. So I was all excited about that. Then I came out of retirement, I'm doing air quotes, um, to act in uh, the Vagina Monologues for charity. We raised an amazing money for a women's battered um, organization. So like that was great. I signed a large deal for the cover group for myself to do a s- series of four speaking engagements. Um, let's just say at a very nice um, fee. 
and here, like things were starting to roll. And I was like, let's go 2020. And then was coming back from a speaking engagement. Actually, when I was on the stage in DC, the gentleman was a doctor that used to work with Obama, President Obama. And he said, this virus that's coming is no joke. When you get back to New York, stock up. It's for real. But it was such at the very beginning that no one really knew about it. But I, you know, I paid attention and I stocked up and I came back. And the next thing we know, we're all inside. Then the next thing we know, I was having conversations about um, the abuse of Asians and harassment and this virus. And then we go into George Floyd is murdered. And what is that shook the world in a way that had not been shaken where people really were home, lifted their heads and said, what the heck is happening? And it brought justice, uh, racial justice to the forefront. Um, and some people saw what was happening, had been happening, what people have been screaming about. People jumped in, some people said no. There was just so much going on. This year has been, and I don't wanna say pres unprecedented, but it has been, um, but we've had more women in power across the world, uh, across the globe. We've had a social justice, companies are stepping up to the plate um, to a certain extent. We're all working in these boxes. Like who would have thought, remember the years when you were like, can I work from home? And everybody was no, unacceptable. You must be in the office. Now everyone's like, please don't come here. Um, you know, and I always say Zoom had no idea what they did when they start doing the virtual backdrops because there were a lot of people, regardless of race or gender or even economic, more economic issues that could finally have a virtual background. Maybe they did not want people that they worked with to know where they were living or how they were living. So Zoom did something that even the playing field a little bit on Zoom. But let's be honest, there's a whole lot of virtual bias going on. There's virtual bullying going on. You thought for some companies with people speaking over everyone um, as a disrespect to women or to juniors, that's happening more on, on Zoom. And we know some people just don't know how to get dressed because they just thought, as long as I have my laptop in my bed, I'm at work. And, you know, so then some people got a little too comfortable with the language they used. But there's all this. So then we have all these social media challenges, you know. So we're going to put now that black box was not a challenge. I hate to break into corporations. It was not a challenge, even though some people took it as a challenge. Um, they were they were a bit confused about that. But then you had the hashtag. What was it? Um, the black and white photos. For women, a lot of women did it and didn't realize that it started in Turkey when women were disappearing. And that's why they were putting black and white photos up because when women were disappearing in Turkey, their photos would appear black and white in the newspaper. It was supposed to be in solidarity with that. Um, there has just been so much happening in 2020 that yeah, the cultural appropriation versus appreciation. Now we know that's just not 2020, but we've had what, three white women come out and say, oh, by the way, I'm white, but I've been portraying that I've been black. And oh yeah, I teach black history. Nothing wrong with that, but you just teach black history because that's what you wanna teach. You don't have to uh, appropriate the culture. So there's that, There's it was happening with Johnny Depp then fragrance. There has been so much happening. And then we have the ally fatigue. Whew. I've jumped on this social and racial justice thing. It's been about two months. We ain't figured this out yet. You know, I literally just got off a call with a company and one guy's like, how long are we gonna spend on this? And it took all my power to keep my mouth shut and let the, the person really run in the meeting. And I was happy because I really wanted to see how they were gonna answer. And they were like, we've only been at this four months. And the way that we approached it in the first two months we had to do a shift and now we're in a different commitment. So the work is gonna take a long time. If we could fix it, it would have been done. I have people calling me asking me for checklists. 
how do I make my culture, my company culture better? How do I fix racism in my company? I'm like, Lord, if there was a checklist, I would be on a beach somewhere sending, sending you by bird the checklist. I would not be sitting here. There's just so much. So I would love to just hear from anyone how you thought your 2020 was going to go, <laughs> what you experienced in 2020, and what you're looking forward to in 2021. Or what are you expecting from your company, from yourself, any of that? Anyone want to jump in? Micah. <laughs> I yeah. guess so. I guess I'll jump in. Um, yeah, it, it's 2020 has been interesting to say the least. Uh, <laughs> I can remember around this time last year, everyone was saying like 2020 is new year, you know, can't wait to, you know, start the new, the new decade and everything else of the sort. And I, I was one of those people on the bandwagon. I, I never make new year's resolutions, but I did think, uh, in, uh, you know, just the symmetry of 2020 was going to be great. Um, and I can say it has been great in, some, in certain ways. Going back to what you were saying about like the George Floyd thing and, and, and coronavirus as a whole, I look at that as being a blessing. Whereas may, other people may think it's kind of it's the wrong word to use. But if it wasn't for that backdrop of coronavirus where everything being shut down, we wouldn't have, we wouldn't be at the point that we're at now where we're seeing, um, we're seeing the strides that, that companies are making, society's making to a certain extent on, you know, racial and social justice. So I would say, you know, 2020 was needed when you're looking at the timeline, as well as I would, I would look at it back as, you know, what doesn't kill you, make you stronger. And um, we're all going to be stronger as a society, you know, going into 2021. Yeah, I think it definitely brought awareness that so many people did not have. There was also a divide. You know, I, I am famous to say that we were all in this together, but we were not equal in this together. And so I don't ever want someone just to assume because you know someone, you know the struggles that they went through on this. But it did bring out awareness and it did shake up a lot of people and look at a lot of the youth they came through um of all races there's a new generation that will not tolerate um anything less than equity for all and how they go about it may not be the way that we want people to go about it but what decade did the young people go about it the way that the older people thought they should go about it um, I, I don't think there was one, but I definitely, I agree with Mike. The, the world has shifted, you know, and I think it's shifting. I hope for the better. It's going to take some time. Um, uh, everybody's not on this ride for social justice or racial justice or for women in power, um, or for equity for LGBTQ plus plus or pronouns or, um, whatever it is that allows each person to walk in their own destiny towards whatever they need for themselves. Everyone doesn't agree that everyone is equal. And uh, anyone that's doing the work or believes that also needs to remember that, that everyone's not gonna be on this journey. And that's okay, because 2021 will still hold people to the fire. I think it is still going to hold companies to the fire in regards to what equity are you giving? And it can't be the banana up the tailpipe. <laughs> you know, where are women leadership? Who's on your board? What does your board look like? How are we advancing? What are your policies and procedures? We want more detail. And so the, I always say to people, I don't think it's, um, Everyone's like, oh, I want transparency. Well, you're not going to get transparency. So let's just stop using that word. But I do believe you can have visibility. And I do believe you can make, um, open up the, the way the systems work and how they work and how, how you get promoted. And what are you going to offer people to upscale them? Um, a new big word that you know, constantly was used this year. But it's for real. How are you investing in your people? And your people have to invest in themselves as well. 
כן. Well, happy holidays, everybody. <laughs> I'm feeling the shirt. I'm just so it tells you, Leslie. I'm feeling the shirt. I feel the so festive thing today. <laughs> this is I'm the last the one. Thank you. Um, I'm, I'm going to dovetail on what Micah says. I be, going in 2021, I was very hopeful. Um, you know, people kept saying it was a Eurovision 2020. It's a Eurovision. Um, I had to adjust my sales um, with COVID, um, different things that I've seen. But it also put my life on pause for a very good reason. I was able to do and look at the, in the direction where my life was going and also seeing where the country is, because I think I was under the impression we were a lot more equal, a lot more balanced than we were. I'm not I'm I'm not ignorant to what goes on. I'm not naive, but I, it just was eye opening to me and a lot of things. I think there was a lot of support, like you said, on the with our young people. And there was a lot of support with people who didn't get credit for doing a lot of stuff just because people weren't in the spotlight. Didn't mean that they weren't doing things. Um, hail to our healthcare workers, our first responders. They stepped up and our teachers. I mean, even the community who went out and fed people, I think 2020 showed us how we can come together. There's always going to be disruptors. There's always going to be bad things that happen. But when we're pushed and we're under the pressure, I think that we can go together. We we can do the damn thing, y'all. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it, that really encouraged me. Um, I was saddened by like the death of George Floyd. I've been saddened by a couple of other deaths after that. Um, every time I see Elijah McClain, it brings tears to my eyes. Such so a sweet soul, and all he's doing is walking home. You know, he's mm -hmm. telling him he's not a gang member. He's telling him I don't have firearms. I don't do any of that stuff. Um, they showed how now. You know, even the other day, it was very disappointing to me that the, they're forcing the EMS people to use ketamine on people. Um, we've still got a long way to go, but at least it's coming out. It's coming out. And kudos to those people who are using the videos to expose the injustices and the things that are happening. Um, I'm just feeling hopeful for 2021, but I'm realistic about where we are and where the work that has to be done. I think it starts with me, you know, even having a forgiving heart on some of the things that are happening. I can't change anybody's opinion, um, but I can have a conversation with them and try to understand where they're coming from. I think us as human beings, we're always evolving. We're always evolving. Things are always changing. Even the planet is changing. Did y'all think we were gonna have snow today? <laughs> Well, <laughs> not 17 changing. inches, that's the same. <laughs> not but, 17 you know, inches. It, <laughs> but it is true. The conversations I think that people are having are a little bit deeper, a little bit more honest. Um, I People are starting to admit that they know what they know and they know what they don't know. Not everybody, we know that. But hopefully this is opening up a space um, where people can ask the questions and educate themselves and then come back and ask questions. And that it's showing a younger generation that you, you can, you know, representation matters and that you can and you should go after for what you want. And you should not let anyone hold it back. But it's also showed our systems, I will always say this, our systems are not broken. Our systems were not designed for the society for which we live in today. Our systems were designed for privilege, white privilege, but it wasn't even, so I want you to remember, it wasn't even for country. You know, the, the whites that were in the country, it was for the privilege that had money at that time. And when I say privilege, you know, I think a privilege of just of many different things, but at that time, that's what the system was built. We are in an antiquated system. So it's not broken. It wasn't designed for those that did not have wealth to succeed. We need to look at all systems, the healthcare system. I think we all can agree on that. that this, I don't, why this is political is not political. The fact that um, every human being should have healthcare, should have education, and should have a choice of education. It shouldn't be a zip code. It should be your, your talent, your smarts, your ability to get there. 
there's so many things that we realize now and it's not going to happen. My favorite thing, not going to happen overnight. It's not going to happen the next month, but to be worked on that we have to shift. We have to do a lot of mind shift as well, because we, the people, which people, who people, <laughs> how, how, how are we going to, I'm never going to say balance. How do we make sure that there's equity and access to understanding what we can have? There's a lot of programs and things out there, but if people don't know they're there, then that's the best kept secret. You know, um, I think we became a little less, someone can absolutely disagree with me, a little less celebrity driven, which is quite surprising in a time that we're all home. I think they became a little less relevant to the situation. You know, I don't see them giving the, Corona shots to a celebrity, and that's going to make everybody run out and take it. Um, nor should they be the first <laughs> to, to, to have it unless they're a healthcare worker on the side. Um, yeah, I 2021, we're walking into 2021 with vaccines, regardless of how everyone feels about them. I'm going to let 2021 roll a little bit on that personally. Um, we're going in. I don't know. I'm, I'm going in still hopeful. If I don't have hope, then what do I have? You know, I'm going in excited that I'm working with companies that are, are doing the work. And when I say doing the work, they're listening to hard conversations and doing their adjusting and looking at things and, and constantly having the conversation, asking the questions and changing policy. Um, you know, I'm pushing the crown act and a lot of handbooks, not because I think it should just be there. I just think that a conversation on someone's hair or beard is irrelevant to their job and their person and their being, unless you are working in a factory and that is a consideration that it may get into a machine or around foods. And that's a different conversation. So I'm excited to look at new policies and shift some of the older policies. Um, yeah. Anyone else want to share what 2020 was and what they're excited for for 2021? Jeff, I know you have something. <laughs> and you're on mute. He said, he said, love him. He said, I'm, stay on mute. <laughs> I just want to say, um, I'm, I'm grateful for 2020. And for everything that has transpired, um, the increase, I guess, in uh, awareness, um, the shift in almost like a paradigm shift in at least values. I, I, I can't say there's been value clarification, but I think there's been at least a new awareness of perhaps the need for a different set of values moving forward. Mm -hmm. I would totally agree with you that uh, the whole idea of a checklist is just <laughs> hilarious. And um, although it perhaps it might be the mechanism that we need to implement, it will take a long time, mm -hmm. of course. To, to have a thorough checklist. But I think in some ways we do need to start identifying all of the little nuances in all of the systems. Mm -hmm. And you're right, it has to be a total overhaul. And, 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 and we as a society have to admit that we need new systems. Right. Because I think we're still trying to fix the old system. And as you, uh, so clearly articulated, it wasn't designed for who we are today and who we're trying to be in 2021 and the years to come. Mm -hmm. So that's where I'm at. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. No, it's, um, it's definitely a new day and a new dawning yet. It's the, not a new day and a new dawning. If that makes sense. 
you know, I don't want to be Pollyanna about it. Like, we're not going into 2021. And it's like, woo-woo, you know, I'm going into 2021 and have a COVID exam. Um, I mean, test schedule because I have to do a procedure. So I'm like, great, that's how I'm starting out the year. I thought I had skated through 2020 without having to have that. So, so things are going to carry on. I just, I'm, I guess I'm hopeful that they're carrying on in part twos of conversations. Um, that there's growth in these conversations that look, there's going to be another nine out of 10, another hashtag social media challenge. Look, there is a new app that we're, you know, everybody's on right now. It is nuts. Um, oh no, Michael, I have things for us to do on that though. I do have plans for that. I, I, I have turned in. Um, so like, you know, there, there's always something new of the moment. That's always going to be. And you know what? And it should be, and you pick and choose what, what you're going to jump on of the moment, right? And how you're going to use it. I think we're the, I can't speak for everyone, but I think we're all at different generations, but I think we're all close enough to generations that we're getting to the point where we get to make some of these decisions. We get to make decisions by our votes. We get to make decisions by how we influence those around us. We get to make decisions how we influence the younger folks coming up. Now, I granted, I believe the younger folks are the ones that's going to make these movements really happen. But we're the ones that now are setting the tone. How are we going to do this? You know, we don't know what 2021 is going to be. I can give you the first three months, but who knows? <laughs> we don't know what tomorrow is going to be with a snowstorm. And so I, when all of us together, when we do that checklist of life, have to have enough boxes that are empty that say miscellaneous, because I think we're gonna be checking a whole lot of miscellaneous boxes as opposed to this is exactly what I'm getting done. And I think flexibility, and someone said it to me the other day, oh my God, Leslie, you're so flexible and I know you're busy. I'm like, if you can't be flexible in 2020, you will never be flexible. If it has not taught us that, it, look, look at all the other things. Dating. Let's throw out dating. That changed, that changed the whole world, right? For some folks, if you were together, you weren't together. And maybe, the, maybe this is what brought it out. Maybe that's what it should have been. Even the dating apps, though, had to change. They added video. You know, remember the couple that met on, and they were here in Brooklyn and they ended up on the rooftop and because they were so close together that they were having dinner on the rooftops, distancing. And then he, he rented a bubble and rolled bubble in a bubble to meet with her. Like everything has changed. Is it for the better? Is it for the worse? To be determined, right? It is sad with the children in school and teachers. But even yesterday, my sister is a supervisor um, in the casinos and she teaches dealers how to deal different games. Philadelphia shut down. Her house is now a blackjack casino. She's teaching online because they approved, which would never happen before for the casino for them to continue teaching. So people's houses are TV studios, gyms, schools, bakeries, you know? So do we just get up and leave that when the doors open in 2021? What did you learn new? What'd you say, Jeff? That's a very interesting question. Because most people don't, I don't think a lot of people want to go back because it doesn't take long to create a new habit. And if you're comfortable, why would you make yourself uncomfortable? Well, I think so many people miss people. So I think that's where it comes down to, you know, who misses people, who wants a hug? Now there's some people that were family and they're like, if I don't get away from these people, <laughs> they just want to see new people, <laughs> you know? So I think, yeah, do when the doors open, whatever that means in 2021, say that the vaccines work and by April, May, they're like, gotta keep your mask on, but 
restaurants are open, gyms are open. Are you running back to where you were before? Or has this really shifted you? Anybody? I think it's, I think it's gonna be interesting um, from a, one from an education standpoint. Um, I remember when I was in college, what, 16, 17 years ago, um, we had online learning there uh, where we basically went online, did our work. You know, there's a professor that had recorded a seminar and everything else of the sort. And it's just, it's just mind boggling now that that seems like such a nuance now, almost two decades later for a lot of high school and, and colleges as well too. And it also, it also bring, it's gonna shift the dynamic on not only cities that we live, such as New York that we're in now, like what's the, what's the onus to come back to New York or Manhattan? You know, when you think about it, 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 the whole, the whole, I guess, thing to do was, oh, I go to NYU, I go to Columbia, or I work for this ad firm, a marketing firm, and I'm staying in Tribeca or Soho or whatever the case may be. If I can still get that same job, if I can get that same education by sitting in my house in Boise, Idaho, then why do I need to come back here and spend the, the rent that they are here? So I think, you know, how we see life right now, over the next 12 to 18 months is going to be completely different every aspect of life, whether it be how we work, you know, how we engage in our community, what we define as our community as well. Because when you think about it too, when you were going into an office, you were like, oh, these are my coworkers. These are my friends. You engage with them outside of work now. Well, now who is going to be that community of people now that you have? Will they be the people like me? I'm sitting in a, a hotel lobby right now <laughs> across from people doing work at another place. Will these now be my community? Of people as well, um, so I think it's going to be it's going to be interesting. You know, I don't have a I don't have a, a, a clear, concise synopsis on what it looks like, but it's going to be intriguing to see you know what these aspects come uh, aspects come to. And I think for me, education is going to be the most the curious one that I'm looking to see how that's going to unfold. Whether that comes from you know the remote learning from elementary school, primary school, and middle school, which are things that I think you sh I think. I think kids at that age should know how to do because they did grow up with an iPad or they did grow up with a computer and everything else of the sort. But, you know, being thrust upon it now, you know, is that was that the right way to do it? So it, it's going to be intriguing to see what, what the next 12 to 18 months bring about in our everyday lives and how we engage. But it also inciting because with, with that intrigue and with that unknown comes opportunity. And I think that's where... A lot of people should, you know, put their, you know, I'll be no pun intended, their 2020 vision on and take a look at it and say, hey, how can I carve out my niche in those in the in this aspect going forward in 20, 2021 and 2022? So just want to share that. I think that no, you're so right. I mean, some people are saying, oh, I'm coming back to New York because the rents are dropping and it's cheap. Okay, well, that's, I hope you sign a couple year lease on this cheap rent because that's going to be, you know, a year, 18 months. And then here's where it has opened up what you said. I can be in Boise, Idaho. Uh, I hope nobody's from Idaho, no offense. Um, I can be wherever. But what the great part of it is, is that like even with one of my clients, they're like, hey, we can hire production folks from outside of New York now. I've been wanting to work with this person. I don't need to bring them in. I don't need to fly them in. It's, they can now work with us. And I think it also opened up when, when companies said, hey, I'm looking for diverse talent and I want to open up the field. I can hire somebody that's sitting in Tampa or somewhere and, and have them as part of the team. And so there is... Again, that less of an excuse that I can't find good talent. Uh, so that's great. Yeah. Were you going to add something? Yes. Hello. And, and, and my apologies from coming in late. I actually just left the school. My greatest concern is even though we're in the school system, we're supposed to prepare the next generation. Um, and so there is a lot that should be invested in education, but it's not. What, what is sad to me 
are the students and families the have not. Yes. You know, we, we can say great about technology and all, uh -huh. but and 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 our school system just gave a month ago, just gave every student their personal laptop. And we would say great. But when I get home, if I don't have internet, what That's good right. is a laptop that can't okay. connect or anything? Not only that, but if I don't have the know-how. Now, my grandbaby is is eight and she figured out herself how to send emails. She sends <laughs> me emails at work and showing me flip grids, I think she called them or whatever. And I went, wow, I don't even know how to do that. But she's motivated to do that. But then on the flip side, I think about the kids who don't have that. They don't have engaging parents to help them. And so my struggle now is, you know, parents are keeping their kids home because of COVID, but kids are suffering because they need the social stimulation and motivation and all, as right. well as the technology and how to do it. And so they have parents who grew up without all this fancy technology mm -hmm. and all, so they don't know how to help them. And it's sad. And so to me, it's, it's going to be very strange the next 18 months. These kids are already behind. Our governor passed an executive order saying, you know, your kids are failing. They need to come back to brick and mortar. But then parents are like, but I don't want to bring back, you know, because we're having an outbreak now after Thanksgiving. And then there'll be another one after the winter holidays. And so these kids are getting steady behind. And they've been behind since March. And it's funny. I had this conversation the other day with uh, friends that have kids. And I said, how are you making these decisions? I mean, I'm just, and I was just asking them, like, how are you making the decisions? Like, you, you do have the money and the means. And they're like, yes, we're lucky in that, that we have internet and have this stuff. She was, but I'm not a school teacher. And I can engage them and we get in the car and we drive here and I try to give them a lesson this way and I try to engage them, but it's hard and you're exhausted and we're working. And she goes, and I have the means. So yes, exactly what you said, Dr. Allen. For those families that don't have the means that are parents out there working, um, trying to get from point A to point B, if they're, if they're, in a place that all of us to even be working. I think anyone that's working right now feels um, blessed to be doing so, um, regardless of what your stature is, because this thing hit everyone from the top to, you know, from the mail room to the boardroom. But look at the kids that were sitting out in front of Taco Bell or what it was, doing their homework so they could get free internet. One of the, you know, and luckily a company came and said, where do you live? And they put it in. But that's two kids out of how many that, that don't have that. And then there's a young, um, I think senior in high school, junior in high school who was bored and said, you know what, I can help. I'm finished my work. And he started tutoring in the neighborhood. Like he just went around and kind of put stuff and said, I'll tutor the kids for free. And so he started this pod online with helping the kids with their work. And he, because he was young, he did songs and he had all kinds of things going. And, you know, the parents were like, I can't help him with that. So this was, this was a godsend. So like, as you said, some people have gotten creative on how to use their skills to help others, but we have a system that I hope as we move into 2021. And when I say system of education, that needs to, work together. It's like you said, Dada, you can't give them a, a, a laptop and have no internet. Now they have a laptop and an the internet, they need a teacher and not an attend somebody else to follow up behind that. It's not always the parent. So I wish that for 2021. We've been wishing for our education system forever, haven't we? But we really need a new shift in our education system. Um, for 2021. We need 
uh, college debt. I don't have that, but I know that there are doctors, lawyers, and Indian chiefs still practicing and still paying off college debt right now. Something's got to give. Home ownership and, and mortgages and how the mortgages are written need to shift. Our healthcare system, we can't afford to die. I hate to put it like that, but the average American cannot afford to die if you don't have, if you don't already have insurance on top of insurance, if you haven't planned for it, but even if you have all of that and you're in the hospital with medical bills. So our healthcare system, our, our women in power, we know that. Our black and brown folks in power. How about just showing up and, and have the equity in school or in offices? The conversations have definitely been shook and had for 2020. The next question is, and I'm not putting anyone on the spot, but you know I'll call you out. What will you do for 2021? Where do you see your place in shifting any type of change? I'll say mine first and then you walk to think about it. How about that? <laughs> I hope that the work that I'm doing with companies will continue to go deeper, will continue to grow, that the work that I do as a chaplain will continue to grow and as a mediator, because I think people will need services as whether you're going back in or staying. We've been nine months at this. Um, I hope to keep educating myself in my field um, with others to continue partnerships with other companies that are doing the work, whether it's social justice or healthcare to really get deeper to build partnerships, because I think as small business, we will not, you know, I'm blessed, I'm knocking on wood, but if the world hadn't shifted and we didn't see what we saw with George Floyd on, on tape, they were taking out diversity and inclusion departments and companies. My work was about to shift again. So, to continue the work, to continue to build good partnerships, you know, because I don't think none of us do, do none of us will do this alone. Anyone else? What do you see for yourself in twenty twenty one, or what do you want from companies, or what do you any of that? This is not a resolution that we're going back to gyms and we're going to lose weight. Other than oh. that, no. <laughs> said, never mind. It. <laughs> oh no, we're not doing that. Um, <laughs> What I would like to see, and even my personal goal, would to be more involved with the youth. Um, I think that a private and public partnership with the schools would be great. Um, I know that Google I got involved with some of the schools here in New York, but I would like to see it on a national level that we could get more. I don't know who's going to be the education secretary, but I think that's going to be really pertinent right now is to get a partnership between the private and the public because some of these schools even these the school systems have been falling behind for a very long time and no fault of the teachers no fault of the educators but I think and no fault of the parents because there's so much school has shifted from being an education system to a social system where our children need so much help, like, you know, when they come to school. I mean, one of my girlfriends, she's actually over some of the daycares in Florida, and she, she's she been telling me for years about food and security. I had no idea. She's like, if some of these children don't get a breakfast and a lunch in school, they don't eat until the next day. And if they don't come to school, they don't eat. That is such an eye-opener for somebody like me who eats three meals a day, and I can walk to the grocery store and do what I need. But I didn't have those, even growing up, I didn't have those issues. There wasn't such a, I didn't know about them. Maybe they were there, but that's one of my goals is to definitely work with youth and be more visible on that aspect. That's great. Thank you for sharing that. Anyone else? Well, I'll speak to the other end of the age spectrum. Um, I'm trying to, I'm trying to help our underserved older population. I think, um, 
we don't serve them well at all. I think we try to make them invisible. So my goal in 2021 is to continue my master's degree in gerontology, change the lives of older folks. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Because we'll all be there one day, so let's let's fix those problems too. Because there are a lot of systemic problems that go through an entire lifetime. So, I agree. Yeah, thank you. Well, I definitely want to see myself as being part of the solution for um, 2021, um, and as an entrepreneur. Uh, now being able to, to help in the insurance, to provide in, at least insurance solutions, both in health and, and life. Uh, I see that as a really valuable product um, or solutions for our community, especially, especially for people that are black and brown that have been under underinsured, um, historically speaking. Um, likewise, um, I think there needs to be a reevaluation of how um, of how we are cleaning our indoor air spaces. Um, so I think that we need to start looking at different types of technologies that can help improve those situations, such as air purification and and better water systems too. Because again, we don't want to have the same situation that happened mm -hmm. in Flint, Michigan, and uh, newer in terms of our water water systems affecting um, again black and brown skin people um, and I think that they were the tip of the iceberg if we start looking at urban urban environmental uh, systems that we probably find some more um, faults and things that haven't been uncovered um, so um, did you hear what happened in New York right now with the water? No, what happened? Oh, God. The, in the news, and I don't want to make light of it, but one of the newscasts was like, well, wait a minute, because people have been um, complaining that there's metallic water tasting in the water in Manhattan. And everyone keeps going, what is it? What, what is going on? And they said, oh, don't worry about it. It's just the decaying leaves that happen every year in the, in the containers and they're just wash out. And one of the reporters were like, wait, did they just say the decaying leaves that falls off the trees in New York City with what, who knows what is in the tanks and we're supposed to just, they're like, ah, oh, don't worry about it. So our systems, I mean, we, we know it. Look, look our, our transportation systems, I'm happy Pete's been, you're going to be transportation, but I have to be honest, you're coming from a town that doesn't have a subway system or bus system. Um, we have a lot of transportation that is anti antiquated. Um, the, look, we can go down a whole list of stuff that we all know that needs to be done, right? So I guess it's not to keep it too dark, I guess it's, uh, yeah, we have a lot of work to do in 2021. We had a lot of work to do in 20. And I'm, exci I'm excited to see how this is all going to, to roll out. I'm excited. You know, this year was a lot of death and a lot of gloom and a lot of doom. And I hope that it, it turns, that the vaccine does what it's supposed to do, um, that it's equity within that, um, service of the vaccine. Um, I would say it that way. I'll be political that way. That we, that jobs turn around. You know, I watched Broadway Cares, the bro that was televised. And, you know, many of you know, my first career was a classical ballet dancer. And I literally said, I, I, I'm not even gonna lie, I cried through half of it because that could have been me without a job. I danced my, you know, for over 20 something years. You don't have backup. That industry is shut down right now. Then, you know, I own a special events company for over 20 something years. There's not an event happening right now. You know, if I had not pivoted and pivoted and added all the things that I've done, that would be me. And there's no, there's no horizon of them coming back anytime soon. 
Look at restaurants. People have worked their entire lives to build their restaurants, their bars. They, they've invested these outside structures to have to take them down last night in New York City. Most people said they're not gonna come back maybe after this weekend. So I hope that I can be part of solutions on how do we get money into these systems that we are taking care of those that have worked so hard and whatever it is, feel that they've chosen or had to choose to survive. How do we have job security and food security and health security? Um, you know, I'm always the one that's like, I want to do it all. How do I focus? Um, and, you know, I focus on what I do. And then, like I said, you partner with others that are doing it. And then how do you do it together? So I guess that's my biggest thing for 2021. How do we partner and how do we make sure that we do this together? Because each of us has our own specialty and our own talents in that field. Why should you try to go learn how to do something completely when there's someone is amazing that's doing it? So how do we partner to be stronger? Um, and how do we understand for those that want to, that you don't have to choose just one side, that it can be about a situation and become less polarizing that if I don't choose black or I don't choose white or I don't choose yellow or I don't choose Jewish or I don't choose Clues or Buddhist or whatever it is that I have to pick just one. And that we can say, this is who I am and these are all the things I enjoy. You know, um, that's my big thing for 2021. Anyone else can jump in. I'll do a shameless plug right now. Go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> I like what you said. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I've already spoke. Well, I'll jump in just to keep the conversation going back. You know, I did suffer from food insecurity as a, as a young child. So I, I agree with you, Kim, that we do need to um, um, do better with feeding people. And one of the comments that my husband and I talked about this morning was when we made our Instacart for ourselves, uh, that we could, we didn't do it yet, but maybe we'll do it tomorrow. Hopefully we'll get on it is to uh, do an Instacart and just send it to our, um, our food bank here in our, our local community. I was on a meeting yesterday with Leslie and, and one of my goals um, within the company that I work with, I've been very blessed to maintain my job throughout COVID and um, is that I, I work with a real estate company and one of our goals, and I think Keith McKinney's jumped on it with me, is that you know we need to get um, some minority-owned businesses, banks, lenders involved in our business to increase uh, brown and black home ownership rates within the state of Florida. And um, I, I agree with you, Leslie, that we just, we, we, we cannot be experts and we see so many different places for need. And, you know, what I've done this past year and am and, and blessed to be able to do this is you know, to send a hundred dollars to the Equal Justice Initiative and to send a hundred dollars to the um, NAACP Legal Defense Fund and, um, you know, support Stacey Abrams and her Fair Fight campaign. And those are, I, I mean, I don't know what else I can do. You know, at my age, I can't go out and, um, protest in the streets. My, my daughter in Washington, D.C., you know, did join two of the, um, the protests for Black Lives Matter that occurred right after the George Floyd deaths. And, you know, we do need to <clears throat> desperately need police reform. I'm sure everybody saw the news this morning where two years ago, video was of a did anybody else see that of the woman in Chicago yes. who, whose apartment had been, I mean, how can that even be a part of our, our 
world right now. So anyway, I think just um, little bits and pieces at all of the different avenues where we can um, kind of on a, on a daily basis is going to be my goal. And then in addition to, you know, I think just analyzing where we need to have um, a brown or black person um, as one of our sales directors. I don't think we have any, and we have six or seven sales directors. Most of them are women. So, um, you know, having been discriminated against as a woman, um, it's, it's nice to see that, but we also, everyone in this group would recognize that um, um, the brown and black people in our community have had even a greater struggle and, um, and need, we all need to help. So in little uh, bits, wherever we can. I'm a, thank you, Jane. I'm gonna give a disclaimer. So Jane is on one of my DNI committees for one of the companies that I work with. And she came in hot yesterday and I was like, oh, I'm loving her. She's like, listen, this is what we're gonna need to do. We're gonna need to get the banks so that people can buy houses. <laughs> And even the VP was like, whoa, 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 can we, can we do the handbook first? She's like, no, listen. And I loved it. And I said, okay, let's take one step back. Let's also partner with them to do a career fair so that we start getting people to understand what it is, not only to buy houses, but to sell the houses and to be in the banking and so that we can control all different areas of it. And, um, so I, I'm looking forward to working with you, She, You can see she is passionate about how do we figure this out? And that's what we need. Like you said, little by little, how do we figure this out? Um, wow, we are already, our time is zooms by on, on these calls, but I want to say thank you again for everyone that's been joining and contributing. I hope everyone has an amazing holiday season. I am going to do shameless plugs. And if you're a friend of mine, you know, I don't usually like to do shameless plugs, but I'm going to do it because I've been told I need to. So tell your friends, everyone listen to Visibility Unlimited, which is the podcast that turns in from the webinars. And as I said, I wrote the book. Um, I had a book deal last year. I wrote the book. It comes out in January. Um, expand beyond your current culture. I'm very excited. Um, I am not the writer. So this was a labor of love, as some of you know, and pain. And but I'm excited that my publisher is excited that pre-sales have already gone over a 1000 or something um, today. So yeah, so I am blessed. But I'm blessed, a special thank you to Mike and the Village Collective to um, jump in and be my partner with this and with so many other things with the website and with the website, with the, with the podcast. I say website because I call him for everything. He is my unofficial official t uh, IT person. And he's like, I don't really need to be on payroll right now because I call him for everything. But I am grateful for you for pushing me, uh, for being with me, for standing with me. Um, for all of you here, it means a lot. And I just wanted to say thank you. Stay safe. See you next year. <laughs>